All right, this is a quick derivation of uh, duration, which is the measure of interest rate risk on a bond. So uh, take the value of the bond, write the value of the bond equal to the sum, uh, we'll use t equals 1 to big T at maturity, the cash flow at time t divided by 1 plus, we'll use y for the yield, uh, to the teeth power. So this is the value of a bond. Uh, of course, a coupon bond has regular coupon payment, but we're just going to write it in this way for now uh, uh, of cash flows at time t. So if we want to get the sensitivity of the value of the bond to changes in the yield, uh, naturally the first place to, to start is the derivative. So we can find the derivative of uh, the value of the bond with respect to changes in the yield. So in other words, what we want here is to find uh, the change in the value of the bond with respect to changes in the yield. Uh, 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 so uh, the idea here, this is going to equal the change in the yield times, of course, uh, the sum t equals 1 to big T, the cash flow at time t divided by 1 plus y to the t's power. Now, uh, in your uh, introductory uh, calculus courses, uh, I don't know if they mentioned, however, uh, but the derivative is a linear operator, and you can show this uh, from the fact that uh, the derivative is the, is the limit, right? Um, so it's, it's simply a limit. So the derivative is a linear operator, so I can move this across the summation. So in other words, this is equal to um, the sum, and I'm going to drop the t equals 1 to t, uh, it's implied t equals 1 to t, uh, of the derivative with respect to y of the cash flow at time t, 1 plus y to the teeth power. So now we just take the derivative of, of each of these individual terms, uh, and the total derivative is the, is the sum of those. When taking this derivative, uh, all we're going to do is use the, the power rule. Uh, of course, you can, you can rewrite this term right here as the cash flow at time t, uh, 1 plus y to the negative t. So we're going to use the, the power rule and then the chain rule, but of course, uh, to take the derivative of the, the term in here, but that's 1, so uh, we can safely ignore it. Uh, so, in, in doing that, uh, we're going to find that the derivative of the value of the bond with respect to the yield is equal to uh, sum t equals 1 to t of, uh, uh, and the, the negative is going to come off here, so I'm going to put the negative out here, negative, and the negative comes from this negative t up there. Uh, negative t cash flow at time t divided by 1 plus y to the t plus 1. The t plus 1, uh, of course, you know, from standard power rule. So this is the, uh, the value, this is the derivative of the bond value with respect to the yield. Now, uh, it, um, so this is, this, is, this is fine. Now when we, we switch over to, um, uh, to use this in finance, we're going to make an approximation, of course. So this, this approximately, so I'll say approximately implies uh, that uh, remember, the derivative is, is what this is saying here is uh, an infinitesimally small change. So that's where this approximation is going to come in. I'm just going to say this approximately means the change in the value of the bond is equal to negative sum t cash flow at time t divided by 1 plus y t plus 1 delta y. So the change in the value of the bond is approximately equal to uh, this term times the change in the yield. Uh, once we have this, of course, this is going to be the change in the dollar value of the bond. Usually we want the percent change uh, in uh, the value of the bond. So all we have to do is divide through, through by V. And this is going to give us the percent change in the value of the bond. Um, now, what this is, you know, so in other words, right here, uh, we get uh, the percent you know, change in the value of the bond is equal to um, and we're going to call this d star, and this is going to be termed modified duration. Uh, negative d star times uh, the change in y. So usually the way this is taught is not to go from the derivative to here, which is the natural way to do it. Um, uh, uh, often what, what people do is we'll say, okay, well, we'll let's just define uh, duration here, and what people often define as Macaulay duration. Let's define duration as... Um, this is going to be uh, the sum of t times the cash flow at time t divided by 
1 plus uh, 1 plus y to the tth power 1 plus y to the tth power uh, divided by v uh, so you know we'll, and this is what is termed Macaulay duration um, and, and this is where we get the, the idea of duration is the weighted average of when you receive the bond because this is going to be if you notice this term here is the value of that payment the value of the bond is nothing other than the present you, you take the, every cash flow, take the present value of it, and sum it up. So in other words, this here is the present value of the teeth cash flow. So if I take the present value of the, uh, the teeth cash flow and divide it by V, this is, this is how much of the value of the bond uh, was that I earned at time T. Of course, all of these, if you, if you were to sum up all these terms, if I, so in other words, if I were to get rid of this T here, this would all sum to 1. So these are, these are weights. Right, so um, so this is the you know this is the time at which I receive the payment. This is the weight of that time. So this defining duration like this, um, uh, you can naturally say that the duration is a weighted average of when you receive the payments. Of course, if you do that and you define duration here, uh, you can then go well. This implies uh, because again we define duration like this for for ease of teaching and so forth, but we don't actually use this to to we 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 need the t plus one here. Remember the derivative is, is you know, the, the correct the correct way. So we need to, to modify it. So then we say before you use this to get the percent change in the value of the bond, divide this through, divide this through by one plus y, right? Um, and if you divide this through by one plus y, uh, this is going to equal just the same thing here. The sum this is going to come up, and we're going to have t plus one here. So this is going to give us our cash flow at time t one plus y t plus 1 divided by v. Um, so now I can say d star. And now this, is, this term is exactly what we have here in the derivative. So this term right here is this. So then I can write the derivative like this. So again, the idea here is you know, coming from one side, the, you know, the actual, accurate method is taking the derivative. Um, you, you know, it is often taught in this way, however, as well. Uh, good. I think that's all I want to say about it right now. So this is, you know, this is what we're what we're going to use. Um, one thing I will say before I stop this is keep in mind the nice thing about doing the derivative in this sense is it's very clear that that duration is a linear approximation of the risk. So in other words, the actual relationship, um, if we have the bond's value and we have yield here, uh, but, you know, the actual relationship looks something like this. And because uh, we know, you know, we're using the uh, the the uh, uh, the derivative, a linear approximation at, at some point, at some point y, um, what we get here is this linear approximation, which is, uh, of course, um, the larger, the, you know, the change in y. If you know, if you're, if you're going to say, you know, the change, you know, this is delta y here. The larger this delta y, the larger um, your error. Uh, of course, one other thing before I stop this: note that duration always predicts the bond is lower than it actually is. Right, so. Um, the nice thing about using the, the, the derivative derivation of, of this formula that we're going to use uh, is that it's very clear that this is an approximation. It's a linear approximation uh, with an error. Uh, of course, we can, we can approximate any, with a polynomial locally, we can, we can approximate this so uh, better and better by, by including you know, higher and higher derivatives. So um, the error here is often termed convexity, uh, and we can do a convexity adjustment taking the second derivative and so forth. Um, to make this, you know, uh, um, have more curvature, so it's not simply a linear approximation. Good. So, um, excellent.